Before we get stuck into the main menu, we've got these two different shapes here. And this is where it starts to get, as you saw from our early lessons last week, you like go from oh, just lines and circles and that kind of thing into more unusual sort of stuff on the complex plane. So we've got this over here, which if you recall, there's kind of a part of this uh, graph that's implied, um, which this is perfect, but there's sort of this interval in between, right? And so to get your shape, which should be sort of flawlessly graphed, um, we extend that interval out to infinity in both directions. Uh, what is that called, by the way, when you've got this extension here, but there's a defined start point? What is that called? It starts with an R. Array. That's a ray, right? So intervals start and end. Rays start, but they never end. And then lines are infinity in both directions. Okay, so the axes are lines, not intervals or rays. Anyway, so you've got these, and then you've got these two spots. What are the coordinates of the two spots? Like this one in the second quadrant, what is that? Have a look. Hopefully you graphed it to start with, right? It's minus 2 plus i, right? And I would say it's 50-50 on whether you um, put it on the point on the coordinates there or if you placed it on the coordinate axes. Both are unambiguous. Um, I think I have a minor preference for putting it in these terms because these are complex numbers, right? This is the complex plane, not the Cartesian plane, but you totally like you can see from um, Shub scale here that's perfect, right? Uh, and then what's this other one? This is one minus three i, isn't it? So important if you didn't do this sort of automatically in your brain. Often when you see minus signs like this, like I just don't trust myself, right? So I want to get this into the form that makes it most easy to see what the reference point is. So my first line of working would have been this to get to us to minus two plus i. If you can, you're happy doing that in your brain, that's great. Just remember, everything that you do mentally that isn't on your piece of paper becomes that much harder to error check if you're going back and having a look like, did I do this right? I don't know, my brain seemed happy with it before and you've not, you've not got a way to debug what happened if something has gone wrong. All right, and then uh, Paris gave us this region shaded over here. What do you think? Are you happy with it? Can I get some thumbs up or some nods? Yeah, okay, happy. Um, there, there are some things that I want to point out here, right? We've got this uh, circle here, it's dotted. Why is it dotted? Yeah, fantastic. So as Angus said, we're not including the boundary. So Paris is right away, like even before you get to the second part, the second region uh, inequality you have to satisfy, that's never going to be included. And that implies, by the way, that there's an extra piece of information, which I didn't ask for, so it's a bit unfair, but you should always think of, your brain should go there whenever you're doing things on the complex plane. Um, there's a couple of boundary points here, right? Between the circle and then this, uh, this region, this kind of like, whoop, that part of the graph. They're here and here, this spot and this spot, okay? Now because Paris correctly put this as a dotted circle to begin with, right, I already know that these boundary points are not included. Yeah, does that make sense? Like they can't be part of the subset of the complex plane I'm after. What I don't know though, though are the coordinates of these boundary points. Did anyone find them? Anyone? Now, I'm going to ask you right now, I'll give you, I'll give you 60 seconds. I gave you nice arguments here to make it actually quite easy to find what those two boundary points are. <laughs> Minus pi on 4, pi on 4. So if you want to think of it this way, the, um, the ray going up into the first quadrant, right? That has a really easy equation because a gradient of, sorry, a gradient of pi on 4, sorry, an angle of pi on 4 means a gradient of? One. That's one, right? It's halfway between naught and pi on two. So therefore this line here, and actually would be helpful for you to graph this again, even though I didn't ask it, the equation of this line is y equals x. Do you agree? Because that's, it passes through the origin gradient one, right? Um, conversely, you've got an equation down here of y equals negative x. Okay, so therefore, Knowing that y equals x, the x and the y coordinates, the real and the imaginary components of that point should be the same. In the time that I've been talking to try and buy you time, has anyone gone and worked out where the coordinates are? Four root four Four root four? What's root four? No, I mean the quadrant four. Oh, the, the fourth root of, okay. So I've got, I've got one bidder. Does anyone want to give, give me a, 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 does everyone agree with that? Or do you want to give me a different number? Well, you're not wrong. Fourth root of four? If I'm just a way of writing it, there is a much more conventional way of writing it. Fourth root of four. Um, can, we, can we simplify any further than the fourth root of four? Maybe I should write, um, this is four to the power of a quarter. Does that help you at all? Because I don't know if you know your fourth roots particularly well. This is, um, 
This is 4 to the power of a half to the power of a half. Do you agree? In next laws? What's 4 to the power of a half again? Two. That's 2 to the power of a half. So this is square root of 2, right? It is a bit of an unconventional, but it's fine. It's, I mean, it's correct. Okay. So root 2, but what, what do I do with that? Like root 2, the number is just on the real axis. So I'm clearly not on the real axis here. Uh, root 2 plus root 2. Right? Okay, great. So let's, uh, let's fix this up a little bit. So let's call this one over here root 2 plus root 2i. How would we know whether we were right or not? You could go to mod arg form if you wanted. That seems like a rather, you know, here's like a, a little nail. It's like, let's take, let's take an anvil and put it on it, right? Um, is there a simpler way than to go to mod arg form, even though that would work? Sure. Varen, what are you thinking? <laughs> Say again? Pythagoras. Pythagoras, maybe year eight maths might, might just do the job for me, um, which of course is a fancy way of working out the modulus, right? We know, we know if we have a look, we're on y equals x, because your real component and your imaginary component are the same, that's fine. Uh, but then I just want to work out, well, okay, does this satisfy this right angle triangle here? Is there not? There always is. Whenever you work out the modulus, there's always a right angle triangle implied. So you've got root 2, root 2. Is the modulus going to be what I want, which is 4? Can you do a squared plus b squared in your head? I think we can, right? Root 2 squared plus root 2 squared does indeed give me 4. So I'm happy with that. Um, doesn't give me exactly the coordinate down here, though. What's, what's this coordinate? I'll give you a clue. It starts with root 2. <laughs> and then minus root 2i, because it's the, what's that called? It starts with a C? It's the conjugate. Thank you very much. OK, great. So we've got boundary points. It's always going to be implied, by the way. If they're nice to you, they will say, show me all the boundary points, show me all the equations. But even if they're not explicitly asking, you should do it anyway. Emmanuel. Do we have an open circle at 4? This point here? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. What do we think? Is there an open circle at 4? Who put an open circle at 4? Who put anything at 4? <laughs> Most people, it sounds like, and when I wandered around, didn't put 4 as a point, which makes sense because it's not necessarily an intersection point with the region, but it's worth asking the question anyway, should it be an open circle or not? Isn't it already implied by the dotted circle? Isn't it already implied by the dotted circle? What does a dotted circle, this dotted circle mean? Not included. It means that's my boundary but I'm not including any spot on that circumference. Yeah? So I guess that is kind of shorthand for putting hollow circles everywhere on the circumference which you just take forever. Right? Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? So that, that entire region there, dotted circle, uh, implies that it's not included. And then we go all the way over here. Are you alright with that? Do make sure, and I think Paris has just gotten there, you've got enough of your complex plane that you can clearly see what boundaries sort of define it. Is that alright? Okay, well done. Go to that piece of paper, which 